just a few words about how I shaped the blades of the turbine wheel for the camp's jet engine. This is the wheel blank, this is a, a blank I've been messing about with. So this is a turned disc. She then saw uh, between the blades and twist the blades. And then this setup here is about how to how I ground the shape on them sort of got is milling slide off the off the lathe. So that's height adjustable and also angle adjustable that way. And that's clamped to the bench. And there's this holder I made, which can be mounted in that milling vise and turned to any angle. In that holder goes an indexed plate that's got a, a hole for every one of the, the 19 veins. That fits in a reamed hole there. And is indexed by a peg in the back plate. So there, you can turn it around, tighten it up, etc. And that puts the centre of the blade roughly on the centre of the turbine disc, roughly on the centre of the uh, the holder. So the, the disc blank goes on top of there. Tight fit, and then the other half of the holder goes on top to clamp the disc into position. And then the diameter of these parts is set so that it, it limits the depth. Uh, that you grind through to the blade. So we want to grind down until we're just touching this. So now we've got something that we can index. Blade to blade. As such. And put that in the holder. Set it roughly upright to start with. You can use a height gauge to adjust the angle of the wheel relative to the holder so that the um, the gap between the blades is exactly horizontal. So then every time that it's indexed around it'll um, hit the gap rather than the blade itself. And then we can set the holder back to whatever the angle is for cutting through. Camps gives about 35 degrees. I found um, something over 40 is probably better for the first cut. And then what I have here is an angle grinder mounted on these packers so that the blades parallel to the table, the discs parallel to the table. It's a two and a half mil disc on it. So I can cut in horizontally in the gap between the blades. I can use the height gauge again to set against the disc so you can find out where the disc is going to be cutting, either the top edge or the bottom edge. Now it's a case of grinding through until the, uh, the gap is, is level with these round pieces here. 
There we go. Just a case of inducting around one blade. And the same again. If I go back to the beginning, we should carry on all the way around. What you can then do is take a second cut. Um, what do I want to do? slightly different angle to build up a different facet on the blade. When you do that you also need to alter the angle so that you maintain a, a draft on the blade. You know, uh, uh, so that it gets thicker from the tip to the root. And again you can get an idea with the height gauge about where it's going to cut so if I set that to the bottom of the disc that's going to cut there probably go a little bit lower down if I set it to the top of the disc I can check that it's not going to affect too much else. Probably want a bit more of an angle than that. Chop it down. A bit less of an angle. Okay, and do the same thing again. After the initial cuts I switched to a thinner disc, a uh, one millimeter cutting disc, so because it gives you more clearance um, to change the angle without sort of grinding away adjacent blades. I think in all I 
I took five or six different cuts to generate the profile on the blades. After grinding the facets on all of the blades, I put the disc on a mandrel in the lathe and just skimmed the blades down to roughly the final size, a little bit over final size. If you look at the ends of the blades here, you can get a good idea of the profile that was achieved by grinding. To smooth the blades off, I built this narrow belt sanding attachment for my, um, my belt sander, that sort of thing. Uh, it just replaces the, the sanding disc that's normally on that side. I made it with a hollow roller in, in the hope that I could use that to to sand the concave faces of the blades, but it, it just doesn't really work out. I uh, need to use a burr for those. Once you've ground the few facets, you end up with the sort of shape of that blue coloured uh, blade there. And the next thing I did was to blend those using like a finger sander attachment for me, my belt sander. And just very carefully going over the uh, each of the blades in turn. surface as well. Obviously if you're doing it for real, you do a little bit uh, on one blade and then move to the next. And that works quite well for the, the convex surfaces. I mean, there's only been a very, very quick go there. Um, for the, the concave surface, you need to, um, where have we gone? Use a, uh, a burr and a multi-tool. So we just um, gently whittle away at that. So you can see the, the, the start of a, of a profile appearing there. And uh, what I do is, is sort of three or four seconds on one blade and then move to the next three or four seconds on the next. Don't try and finish one blade. Go, go around evenly and do the same to each. And um, it, it takes shape surprisingly quickly. Uh, this is where I've got to with the turbine wheel after a bit more cleaning up and fettling. few little irregularities, but I can't wait until I've got it on the shaft to balance it before I'm trying to get it to get the last of them out. I'm going to run out of metal to remove to, to balance it. There's little nicks at the bottom of each blade where I haven't been able to, to 
that sand it. They're not deep. Um, slightly concerned about them. I would like to get rid of them, but I think I'm going to sand the blade away to nothing if I keep trying to to get at them. We'll see how it goes. Once I was reasonably happy with the shape of the blades, I checked the angle against the uh, Valley Given in Camps's book and, and tweaked them um, to get them all at a, a consistent angle. I then um, assembled the, the turbine disc and the bearing onto the shaft permanently, uh, put them in the lathe, made sure it was all running true, and then just skimmed the tips of the blades down again until it was the, uh, the right clearance to the MGV. After that I spent some time getting the turbine disc and shaft assembly balanced before building the engine up. It seemed to work okay.